Hello, I'd like to welcome you all to our webinar today. My name is Larry Pearson, and I'm Vice President of Marketing at Impetus Technologies. And I have the pleasure of being your host and MC for today's session, which is entitled, Accelerate Your Journey from Data to Decisions, a Unified Analytics Platform for ETL, Machine Learning, and BI. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with Impetus, we are a group of companies headquartered right here in the U.S. in the heart of Silicon Valley, and we distinguish ourselves in a couple of different ways. First, we specialize in helping large corporations with what I like to call all things data. And in most cases, that means helping them achieve what is commonly referred to as a single source of truth. And that's actually what is the in inspired this uh, mission statement that you see on your screen uh, on your screen right now. Secondly, inside of that specialization, our offerings span the full life cycle from technology strategy and cloud migration through big data processing, advanced analytics, BI, and even DevOps. And having solutions that span that full range of of offerings means that uh, we can help you wherever you may be in your enterprise analytics journey to address the challenges you may face and help you take that next appropriate step. Today, we will be focusing on how two of those offerings, Stream Analytics, an impetus software product, and an, an offering from our sister company, Kybos Insights, will provide a BI acceleration solution showing you how these solutions can combine together to deliver a powerful unified enterprise analytics capability. And we'll actually show you a live demonstration of what that unified user experience uh, looks like. So we've got uh, lots of ground to cover for you today. Uh, let me start by uh, helping you, uh, uh, by taking a quick look at the agenda today. Uh, first, we'll be talking about some of the challenges that our industry faces in offering their users a unified analytics platform and the opportunity that that represents will provide an overview of both the stream analytics solution and the Kaibo solution and again how they integrate together to offer that unified platform uh, that you're here to uh, learn more about and that will be done in the form of a live demonstration as i said i would remind you again to please uh, uh, send your questions in at any point in time the other way we add a little bit of interactivity uh, to the experience today is by uh, a couple of polling questions. And you'll see that polling question come up on your screen uh, now. It is in two parts. And the first says, in your data transformation journey, which of the following are your top two concerns? Onboarding new sources and addressing the complexity of data integration and the proliferation of of different uh, data sources from an ingestion standpoint, uh, data preparation and enrichment, real-time availability of data for consumption and dealing with the availability of streaming and real-time uh, sources. And lastly, the scalability of your ETL workflows and maybe the fact that you actually have multiple solutions which you're using to address ETL and how that again can be better addressed through a unified approach. So that's on the data transformation side of your journey. On the BI side, uh, the questions that we would ask is uh, for you to identify which of the following are your greatest challenge, inability to query data at scale, or the, or the challenge of achieve, achieving the required latency expected by your users and represented in your service level agreements with them, uh, presenting a consistent view for users across a, a wide variety of, uh, of data sources and requirements for transformation, or lastly, uh, all of the above. So this poll question will be, remain open for the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Would ask you to respond to both aspects of the poll, and I'll actually come back to you then and show you the results of that, and that's always a very interesting part of our webinar experience. Uh, a brief introduction of my colleagues who will be with me today uh, as subject matter experts. First, Ajay Anand is Chief Product Officer with Kaivos Insights. Uh, he's an industry veteran with more than 25 years of experience in creating best-in-class solutions 
for enterprises in the areas of business intelligence, distributed computing, and storage, and he leads our core product engineering team and actually has been instrumental in shaping the functionality and architecture of the product since its very inception. Previously on and led product management for Hadoop at, at, at Yahoo, and uh, after that was a co-founder of Datamir. With him also today is Amarjeet Singh Khalsa, who is a product manager for Stream Analytics. Amarjeet uh, is also a member of the core team that developed the Stream Analytics product and is involved uh, in helping guide the, uh, manage the customer, or the, the product roadmap, leading implementations and involved in customer engagements to assure that that roadmap represents their best uh, set of uh, interests and needs. The third uh, subject matter expert with me today is Needy Mittal. Needy is a solution architect for Kaivos Insights, and she has more than 10 years of industry experience and is a key member of the, the Kaivos team and spends her time translating business and functional requirements into actionable insights for Kaivos customers. So I hope you can see we've got a very, very highly qualified uh, set of uh, plant panelists and uh, excited to be able to start this off by asking Ajay to kick things off. Ajay Anand, Chief Product Officer from Kaivos Insights. Thanks, Barry. So enterprises today are faced with an environment where data is growing exponentially and arriving at tremendous speed. And it's coming from a variety of data sources and in different formats. And they're running into limitations of their traditional BI tools and infrastructures to keep up with the volume and velocity. So they're looking to the cloud to see if they can leverage the cloud to deal with the issues of scale and speed to control their costs. The key after all is, how quickly can you take advantage of this data and make the decisions that are necessary to drive your business? So let's take a look at a few real life examples and customer scenarios. The first one we're looking at is uh, a leading uh, content streaming platform. They do viewership analytics. Now, as you're well aware, these organizations are seeing a tremendous upsurge given the current climate. But it is imperative to act quickly and understand viewing patterns across a variety of devices and channels and combine this with demographic information and other sources of information related to uh, how the content is being viewed. To really understand where to target and promote the content, how to demonstrate ROI for advertisers, how to increase viewership and reduce churn in a highly competitive environment where there are a huge number of choices for the viewer. Ingesting all of this data, quickly understanding patterns, and applying machine learning techniques, doing data cleansing, landing the data in a scalable infrastructure, and then providing instant and interactive analysis through their BI tools and through the data science tools of choice. So dealing with data which you know, can be millions of records, hundreds of millions of records daily, Overall, they're analyzing over 100 billion records, and they're looking for instant response time for their BI users. And you, you'll be seeing some of this in the demo uh, shortly. The next use case is a leading software provider. And they were looking to analyze their customer journey across multiple products, analyze the customer experience across multiple touch points. But previously, data was in multiple silos related to either transactions or customer support or product usage. And when their executive team or their CEO asked a question, the answers were inconsistent across these multiple silos. So they, they embarked on a journey to bring all of this data together in a data lake so they, get, they could get a consistent single source of truth, but still have the ability to query all of this data. And as you can see, hundreds of billions of rows with instant response time. And here they were looking for really challenging data sets. You know, they had uh, data coming from all of these different places. So they've got, uh, for people who are familiar with how, uh, you know, BI tools work, you've got, you know, nine or 10 fact tables, 10 or 15 uh, dimension tables. All of that needs to be combined together to give a consistent view across your enterprise. The third example we're looking at 
is of a financial institution where they wanted to examine patterns of fraudulent behavior across zip codes and across merchants and quickly identify anomalies and look at trends. It was necessary to combine a huge amount of historical data with real-time data coming in. This needed to be blended together. Data needed to be quickly prepared and cleansed. Models were applied for scoring, clustering, categorization, so that time to insight was reduced and they could really understand the patterns of fraudulent behavior and take quick and corrective action. So we can see that data is opening up tremendous possibilities and opportunities for enterprises. So they now have access to more data than ever before about their customers, about transactions at the most granular detail, about interactions across all possible channels, interactions on the web, on mobile devices, really generating hundreds of billions, trillions of data points. So the opportunity exists to really utilize this data to transform the, de the decision-making process at businesses. But it's a double-edged sword. They need to act quickly in order to stay competitive and succeed. Time to insight is critical. How quickly can you ingest and make sense of all this data, apply intelligence to it, clean it, make it consistent, get it in the hands of business analysts and data scientists, and give them the ability to deal with this data in a self-service, interactive way and get instant response times. And in order to stay competitive, you know, really the ones that succeed, the enterprises that succeed are the ones that can really take advantage of this data, solve these challenges of ingestion, of analysis, and make this data available to their analysts who are key to making decisions for driving their business. So we're looking at a combination of, you know, two different things. <clears throat> uh, dealing with the data at tremendous volume and velocity, being able to ingest that in a self-service way and do ETL and transformations, clean up the data, and then the high-performance BI. Once your data you know, is ready for analysis, now you want your BI users to be able to interact with it instantly. They, they don't want to be submitting a query and waiting for minutes, and in traditional systems, they could be waiting for hours uh, to get a response. Combining all of this data and some of the examples we just looked at, you know, combining data from different silos, this could take days uh, to really get a to get an analysis done. We, there's a customer in the financial services space uh, looking for doing risk analysis across multiple touch points, and they had to really run queries across all the different data warehouses, bring all the data together manually in spreadsheets, and could they take days to process the information. So it's really imperative to succeed uh, in this current climate to be able to reduce the time taken from the point where you get the data to when you make your decision. So the solution that we're gonna be looking at is uh, really combines, uh, addresses both problems. So the two products we're gonna be looking at, the first is Stream Analytics and the other is Kyvos and how they work hand in hand to deliver an end-to-end -end solution. So Stream Analytics takes care of ingesting and transforming data from all kinds of data sources at massive volumes and speed, providing the ability to apply machine learning on the fly, landing the data in your data lake of choice, regardless of which cloud platform you choose. It could be Amazon, could be Azure, Google Cloud, perhaps a cloud data warehouse like Snowflake. It could be an on-prem data lake like Hadoop. But once the data has landed in your data lake, now you need to make it immediately available uh, to your business users. So that's where Kaivos kicks in. It takes all of this data, builds multi-dimensional cubes at unprecedented scale, so that now business users and data scientists can use their tool of choice, connect to trillions of rows of data, and get instant interactive insights. And the reason for building these cubes is so that you can pre-process the data, make it all ready and uh, do all the computations up front so that when a query comes in, now you can respond to that data instantly and you don't have to be trying to run heavy duty queries, trying to process large volumes of data, doing joins across multiple tables, doing group wise across large data sets. All of that takes time. So you wanna eliminate that from your decision-making process and do that up front so that now you can make the data available 
to your business users and also your data scientists. So all of your users can connect to a single consistent view of your data. Use your BI tools, you know, you can use Excel, you can use MicroStrategy, Tableau, Power BI, whatever you choose for your BI users. And your data scientists can connect to it using R or Python and be able to run their algorithms connecting to the same data. And in the demo, you're gonna see uh, this in action. So let's take a look at each of these uh, tools in a little more detail at, what, at the features that they provide. So the key features on the stream analytics side, it's a complete data 360 platform. So it provides a complete self-service data ingestion and transformation platform, dealing with both real-time and static data sources using open source technologies. So you can create your workflows for ETL and machine learning at enterprise scale. And it provides an easy visual interface to quickly design these workflows, but also provides a robust solution designed for enterprise grade deployments with end-to-end -end lifecycle management. So this does the data ingestion, data cleansing, change data capture, CI, CD pipeline development, all on your cloud platform. And it provides the ability to incorporate machine learning right here. You know, as you're ingesting your data, you can run machine learning algorithms to, you know, do whatever clustering, categorization, or other, you know, models you want to run on your data to get even more insight and understanding of your data as it comes in. Once your data lands, you know, that's where Kairos takes over. So here we're using smart OLAP technology at data at tremendous scale. So this is, you know, massively scalable. And we, what, what Kairos does is we create a semantic layer on top of this data and does the computation and pre-aggregation of this data to enable delivery of instant response time queries from your BI or data science tools. It's designed to run natively in cloud infrastructures so that it can build multi-dimensional cubes at unprecedented scale. And this is extremely important. If your tool is not designed to take advantage of distributed computing at enterprise scale in your cloud infrastructure, trying to port a traditional application over and expect it to take advantage of the cloud is, not, is really not the way to go. So this has been designed to really scale out as you need it. And as new data comes in, it gets seamlessly added to the cube with no disruption to the users. So the solution is horizontally scalable and cubes can be built at massive scale with no compromises. So now you can slice and dice data sets with trillions of rows, interactively drill down to the most detailed levels of granularity. And since the data has been pre-processed into the cubes, Business users and data scientists don't need to run expensive and time-consuming queries on raw data. So this can scale out, scale out to deal with thousands of users without exponentially increasing costs. So to summarize the benefits of the combined solution you're about to see, it solves the problems of data ingestion, transformation, creating an end-to-end -end pipeline and workflow, so that data is brought in, combined, profiled, built into multidimensional cubes, and made ready for instant analytics from your BI tool of choice. For data scientists, machine learning can be seamlessly integrated, both on the incoming data, as well as on the processed and historical data to get insights at unprecedented scale. So with that, let's see this in action. Over to you, Amarjeet. Oh, there's poll results as well. Uh, th thank you, Ajay. Uh, ops team, if you could close the poll now and uh, sh share the poll results, we'll move to that uh, prior to moving into the demo. You should see the poll results uh, shown on your screen here momentarily. You'll recall that the poll had two parts. The poll question had two parts to it. The first said, in your data transformation journey, which of the following uh, are the top two challenges that you face. And here you see the responses to that. There were five uh, options. The one or the top two really are addressing real-time availability and also the complexity of uh, uh, data integration and the data ingestion uh, uh, choices, and each at 47 and 41%. So thank you all for that. 
The second part of the question said, in your current BI journey, what is your greatest challenge? And we looked there and far and away uh, in the BI side of the uh, life cycle, we see that all of these things represent challenges with fully 65% of our audience saying, yeah, we have challenges in all those areas. So thank you again for responding uh, to the poll. We'll jump now uh, over to the uh, demonstration and that'll be done by Amarjeet, but I would remind you all, all again, uh, at any time you can enter your questions and we've got time set aside at the end uh, for that. So Amarjeet, uh, it's over to you. So thank you, Larry and Ajay, and hello everyone. So today's demo is on streaming video on-demand platform story, uh, something like Netflix, Prime, or Disney Plus. Now, as we all know, hosting the right content is the key for all these platforms. And to understand the content's true potential, uh, we need to get answers to questions um, like which movies are actually driving my subscriber's count, or what's the week-over-week -week viewership pattern, or can we get a forecast trend for a given genre so that we get to know whether comedy will be trending or thriller will be trending. Now, for that, we need to analyze all kinds of data. So now, okay, now here we have 2.2 billion viewership records. We have gathered this from 96 million subscribers and over a span of five years. So let's get a better understanding of the data we are dealing with here. Okay, so we have viewership data, right? It's a plain CSV. It requires cleansing, deduplication, enrichment, and finally, partition storage in S3. Uh, so basically, if you look at it, it's a typical ETL flow, uh, but our focus will be on how easily we can achieve it in stream analytics and how scalable those ETL pipelines would be. And then we have subscription data. Uh, this one is residing in Microsoft SQL Server Storage. It's coming from a database table. We'll be performing CDC on it and creating a single source of truth for it in S3. Uh, then we have movies data. It's a complex nested JSON. <coughs> Our idea is to flatten it out and use it in our viewership analytics, right? So as you can see, we are reading from a variety of sources in different formats, right? And once all these ETLs are done in stream analytics, it will trigger a cube build. Now that cube build will create a Kaios cube, which will be massively scalable OLAP cube, right? And you can get answers to all your business queries as Anand mentioned through that cube, right? And matter of seconds. And while you're firing those queries, you can fire them from Excel, Tableau, Kaggle's native interface, or Python. Along with it, we'll also be querying that cube in stream analytics. And we'll be querying a massive amount of data, and we'll be actually getting aggregates on it, and training a machine learning model on top of it without writing a single line of code. So that's what we plan to do in this demonstration. So let's get to it. All right, I hope my screen is visible to you all. All right, so what you're seeing is Stream Analytics web interface, right? And each tile here represents an ETL flow, right? And once you create these ETL flow, ETL flow, we actually call it data pipeline. So once you create these data pipelines, you can configure them on Databricks or EMR, right? You can choose uh, whether they'll be running alongside another jobs or they get their own dedicated cluster. And while you do so, you can configure their capacity requirements. And whether they'll be needing any auto-scaling rules, you can configure those rules here. Uh, whether they'll be running on demand instances or spot instances. So, um, you know, you can configure their capacity and how they behave on a cluster. So once that is done, right, and you start this pipeline, it will be running on the pre-configured uh, settings. But the idea is, you don't need to set up all these things in EMR or Databricks. You can do it from right here where you are creating your ETL jobs. So let's see how we can create one of these. We'll be starting with our viewership ETL, that's our viewership analytics pipeline. So to create an ETL flow like this, we can drag and drop components from the palette on the right, as you see. Right? We connect them and uh, define our business logic or data flow, as we call it. So now, palette is divided in four sections. The first one being sources. Uh, you can read from real-time sources or batch sources. 
and data could there could be structured, unstructured, semi-structured, and it could be in a variety of format, be it Parquet, Avro, JSON, CSV, and whatnot, right? So once you have read the data, you can transform it using all these operators. We will see a couple of them in our demonstration as well. Uh, then we have machine learning operators. Now you can use these in two modes. Uh, you can use them in training mode, so the incoming stream will be actually training a model. But if you already have a trained model, you can actually leverage that model and use these operators in prediction mode so that a predictive score can be generated on incoming stream and enriched into it. And once your data is completely transformed, uh, you can save it or you can persist it at the desired emitter, right? Choice of, uh, in, in choice of your format, right? So basically that's what this palette allows us to do. Another interesting thing about creating all these ETL flows in stream analytics is you're actually working with your data. So now if I click on this viewership icon, right, I'm reading my data directly from S3. I get to see my columns in the viewership data set, the data types, the various values, and whenever you click at any stage, you get to see how your data gets transformed at that stage. So think of a traditional system where you'll have to build a complete ETL flow, you'll have to deploy it on Databricks or EMR, and then wait for the results to come up, validate them, and finally rectify the process. You don't need to do all that. It saves all that hassle because if you see any error in your functional logic, that will appear right here, and you can rectify it uh, as you see it, right? So it saves a lot of time and makes your development really faster. So let's see what we are doing with our viewership data here. So I read a viewership data, all right? Then I pass it through my data quality operator. So this is the place where I've defined all my quality rules. So data which meets my quality requirements, only that stream will be moved forward for the ETL processing. The other part will be moved to an error queue where you can analyze it for, uh, you know, all sorts of reasons and take the necessary actions. After I have received the quality data, we are just dropping our duplicate records here. Now, uh, one more thing we analyzed while uh, looking at our viewership data. There were quite a few records where device category was null. So what we did is we trained a decision tree model, so which will actually predict the device category for us based on device OS, its the screen size, or browser. So I'm splitting my stream in two parts. One, where device category is not null, that goes straight to the union operator, and where device category is null, that portion goes to the decision tree, where I'll be using it to predict the device category. And once I have the device category, I'll enrich it in the stream, and finally, will union it with the previous stream. So at this point, at union operator, I have records which are clean, which are not duplicate, and they have device category populated in every record. So I have a clean viewership data, correct? This point, I would like to enrich it with my movies data. So as we discussed earlier, it's actually a nested JSON. So if you look at director has information at one level and review actually goes deep down. So uh, when we are doing all these operations, right, we would like to flatten it out. So that's why I'm passing it to a field flattener. Now what field flattener does here is it will traverse through all JSON paths. It will fetch the value nodes and it will bring them on top so that you actually see these nodes as a column in your table, as opposed to you know traversing all sorts of JSON path to get to the value. So after it's flattened out, it's linear. I'll be joining it with my viewership data. We'll be deriving all sorts of movie attributes, and finally, the refined data will be saved in S3, right? Where Cube can actually leverage it. Uh, so now, at this point, Cube will actually take advantage of completely processed data, which is all sorts of informations coming from variety of sources. So that's how we are processing our viewership data. Let's talk about our subscription data. Okay. All right. So for subscription, uh, okay, before even we get to it. So then uh, during our interactions with uh, large enterprises, now they could be from telecom domain or, you know, various industries actually, but the idea is what we came across is that they all have a lot of data in their OLTP platforms, right? 
So they're transaction systems. But the challenge is they would like to run all sorts of analytics, but they're limited by the capacity of it. So that's where they would like to migrate these things on S3, Hadoop, Hive, right? But it's not a one-time migration. They would always like that their target is up to date and in sync with the source systems, right? So that's where <clears throat> the process of change data capture or CDC comes into play. Now, but when we talk about CDC, there are a variety of databases. Each one of them has you know, various versions. And uh, in a typical enterprise, you will find out hundreds of tables in there. And it's very hard and very cumbersome to create CDC process for each one of them and maintain them over a period of time, right? So that gave us the idea of creating CDC applications in, in the system in stream analytics. So essentially what we are doing here is we just specify what is our source and what is our target, okay? And what exactly we want to capture in CDC process, right? That's all we need to do. Behind the scenes, system will create an ATL flow which will ensure the smooth implementation of change data capture process. And not just that, when you run it, you will get to see uh, how many records got inserted, updated, or deleted. So it's a completely transparent system, right? And gives you the power to configure them, to define the capacity of cluster, where it will be running. So you can actually cater to different use cases. So there could be a use case where you need a smaller cluster, so you can configure accordingly, right? So now with that, let's take a look at how we are transforming our subscription data. So I'm reading it from MSQL Server, just making sure that I have required privileges. Um, yeah, I've selected just one table. You can select as many as we like to capture CDC for. This is my target, my bucket, and the folder location in S3. And, and here you can choose the columns you would like to capture during the CDC process. If you want, you can drop certain columns, and we'll be doing a type 1 CDC over here. Next, next, next. You can schedule it if you like, so that it gets executed at a particular amount, uh, you know, time. So that's all. See, we just specified metadata information and source and target details, and we are good to go, right? So that's how we are transforming our subscription data. Now we know how we transformed our subscription data, and we also have our viewership ETL pipeline ready, correct? With that, all we need is the way in which we can trigger an automated mechanism which will call these flows at the right time, correct? So one possible solution could be just schedule them at a specified time. But if you look at viewership data, right, now before you invoke or process your viewership ETL pipeline, you need to make sure that movies data is up to date, which is the responsibility of movies ETL pipeline. So now I, I just cannot schedule it because if I do so, uh, there may be a point in time where movies data is not up to date. So viewership pipeline will, you know, may lead to errors. So that's where to show these dependencies, we came up with the concept of workflows in stream analytics. Yeah, just give me a second. Yeah. So, we, uh, so what we see here is I'm able to express the dependency between movies and viewership. So when, as soon as this workflow starts, right, the viewership will only be invoked when the movies data is completely and successfully processed. And since subscription is not dependent on this flow, it can always start in parallel and run on its own cluster capacity. And at any point in time, if you want to get notified for successful execution of a pipeline or its failure, you know, you can, notif uh, you can configure an email action, you can make a call to Python script, and there are a bunch of operators which are available here which can help you. So with that, once my viewership data and subscription data is completely processed, I'll be making a call to HTTP operator. Now this in turn will invoke the cube build. Right, where we'll build that OLAP queue, and how that queue will work, what are its internals for that, I'll be handing it over to Nithi. So over to you, Nithi. Yeah, thanks, Amarjeet, for this great demo. So we can't imagine uh, how much stream analytics has simplified the process of complex ETL and data ingestion requirements, especially on cloud platforms for our customers. So it has helped them to reduce their implementation cycle from weeks to hours, 
and get cleaner data on data lake that they can use for their further BI and analytics needs. So given that this problem is now solved for us, so let me show you how we can use Kaiwas uh, to consume this data. So on my screen, you can see Kaiwas user-friendly interface that allows user to design and manage Kaiwas cubes with simple drag and drop features. So this Kaiwas instance is currently deployed on AWS cloud. And similarly, it can be deployed on other cloud platforms also like Azure and GCP. So as Amajit said, the data will be available after the ETL process is completely on S3 data lake. We can create edge catalog tables on top of their data, and we can register those tables in the form of files in Kaiwas, as you can see on my screen. So this is a fact viewership file, for instance, which has been created on this particular fact viewership table. It's nothing but an edge catalog table. So once these files are registered in Kaiwas, they can be further used for data modeling and cube designing purposes. So now I will talk about two key applications of Kaiwas, the relationship designer and the cube designer, followed by the Kaiwas native visualization layer. So let me switch to the Kaiwas relationship designer screen. So on my screen, we can see three tables which are connected in a simple star schema. I have simply dragged and dropped these tables from this left panel here and connected them together using the joining keys. The fact viewership uh, table is connected with the dimension movies using the movie title, while it is connected with subscriber using the subscriber ID. So now let me talk about this data first. So this fact viewership data contains information like when the movie was watched, for what duration, who watched it, and on which device it was watched. Similarly, this movie dimension data contains information like title, genre, release date, and content rating. Subscriber information contains demographic information of the subscriber, like state, county, along with its subscription type. So now we can see this is a simple star schema, but Kaiwas can also model different other schemas like snowflake schema, multi-fact schema, single file schemas. So once this data model is ready, it can be act as it will act as a source to the cube designer screen, which we also call as our universal semantic layer, uh, like using which you can uh, like pick and choose any BI tool of your choice and connect using either MDX or a SQL connection. You can also connect this universal semantic layer using your data science tools using JDBC and ODBC connection. Now let me show you the cube designer screen where we will. Uh, create a cube design on top of the data model. In the left panel, we can see all the candidate dimensions and measures from where we can pick and choose what all uh, dimensions like hierarchies and attributes we want to keep in the cube along with the measures. Now here is a list of dimensions that I have added into this cube. For example, this viewership dimension contains this multiple hierarchy and required attributes like device OS which has this hierarchy of device category, OS, and size. Similarly, we have this hierarchy of viewing weeks and these attributes. There is another dimension like subscriber location, which has a hierarchy of state and county. So I'm, I can actually drill down to the county level to analyze the subscriber level viewership information. So this way I can actually choose what kind of granularity I want to keep in the cube. So once all these dimensions are de uh, designed and defined, we can also we would, we would need to define the measures here, like this viewership is a measure uh, of function count, which is defined on number of days. I also have these different functions available uh, on top of which we, I can like, calculate my aggregates in the cube. So once these measures are defined, I can also define calculated measures, which are MDX expressions like this, and these can be defined anytime, even after I have designed and built the cube. So once the cube is designed, I will do a full build on the cube to add all the historical data. Similarly, we can also do in, like incremental builds to add daily incremental data, and this will provide seamless experience to the users without any downtime. So once the cube is designed and built, it is available for us to consume through any BI tool of our choice using either MDX or a SQL connection. Now I'm switched to a dashboard that we have created on our 
uh, native visualization layer. We call it as a viewership content analysis. This dashboard is actually querying 2.2 billion viewership records across 96 million subscribers and has around five years of data. So now let me choose a, a one year out of those five years to analyze the movie's data. And I can see how quickly the dashboard got refreshed in sub-second response time. So Kaiwa's smart OLAP technology has enabled us to interactively query the cube and get these uh, instantaneous uh, response times on the dashboard. So this first widget is actually giving me the top 10 movies uh, by viewership. And I can see Jurassic World has the highest viewership. Suppose I want to analyze data for this particular movie. Uh, let me click on this movie. And I can see all the other widgets got refreshed with this Jurassic World viewership data. So in the second widget, I can see that the day second has the highest viewership from the release date. Similarly, the third widget is giving me that a standard subscriber has the highest viewership and they have watched this movie on device television. So these kind of powerful insights can be derived out of this dashboard. So let me go to the bottom part of this dashboard where I can see a heat map, which is giving me the distribution of viewership across various states. And I can see that California and Texas has the highest viewership for this movie. Now, suppose I want to drill down to a county level and see the distribution of the viewership against that. I can simply do a drill down and it will give me a distribution of viewership across various county in Texas. And now if I click on the on a county which has the highest viewership, the whole dashboard will get reflected with the viewership information of that county. So these are the kind of powerful insights that we can derive out of this dashboard. And it can help me give uh, like smart content buying decisions. We can also provide uh, like uh, subscriber level recommendations to the users. It can also be used by marketing and advertising for their uh, marketing pushes. So currently what we are doing is an interactive analysis on top of cube data in this dashboard, but we can also leverage the Skyverse cube data for doing data science forecasting and prediction analysis. Now let me switch to a dashboard, which is giving me a forecasting numbers for a particular movie, which is released uh, in a particular genre. So here we can see uh, like uh, the upcoming 20 weeks forecasting numbers, which were calculated using a data science algorithm on top of Kaiwa's aggregated data. So these are the uh, I mean, different data science algorithms that we can run on top of Kaiwa's cube data, but we can also leverage stream analytics to train these data science models and come up with these forecasting numbers. So now I will have Amarjeet to show us how we can actually train these data science model in stream analytics and leverage Kaiwa's cube data there. So over to you, Amarjeet. Thank you, Niti. All right, so um, what we have here is, so as we see, um, there's a massive amount of data that goes into Cube, right? And Cube has the power to get the insights out of it within seconds. Okay. So think of a scenario where we have to train a model on aggregated data for 2.2 billion rows, right? So first you'll have to aggregate that data in a typical ETL pipeline. Uh, that will require a lot of infrastructure and time. And once that is done, you will be feeding it into machine learning operator, correct? So, but since Cube has already done it for us, what we'll be doing is we'll be querying Cube directly into stream analytics. It's as simple as, you know, implementing a JDBC connector here, so I'm referring to Kaibu's connection. We'll be firing this query, and that's it. So with that, we have read the Cube data, aggregated data actually from Cube, in this JDBC operator, and we'll be feeding it to this random forest operator. Now, we are using it in the training mode. I'll be training a regression model, random forest, and that will be for our genre analysis. So I select my features. Uh, we would like to predict a viewership count as we saw on the dashboard, and there are a bunch of continuous and categorical features which we have selected for it. There are a variety of transformations available here um, that can help you in pre-processing your data. So for instance, I've used a feature hasher to club all my categorical variables here. So after my pre-processing is done, I'll configure my model. 
All right, so you can specify all the properties of random forest here. It's all configuration driven, so you actually don't have to write any piece of code here. Uh, now, by this point, you have provided all the configurations which are necessary to train a model, right? Now, you can actually specify the evaluation details. So what we are doing here is we are specifying that our training to evaluation rate of ratio would be 80% um, to 20%. So my 80% of data would be used for training my model, and the rest of the 20% data will be used for evaluation. And I'll be using root mean squared error metric for evaluating the performance of my model. So when you actually see these models trained, you get all these matrices, which actually tells you how good those models are. Uh, in fact, you can also optimize those models by specifying all the hyperparameters. Uh, we did not need it for this particular use case, so I skipped it. But you can specify these hyperparameters and train. Uh, you can optimize your model, and that's it. With that, you'll have a genre model trained for you. And once that is trained, you can actually use it in a prediction pipeline. So I'm reading my data from S3. If you want, you can read it from any source which we saw earlier. And I'll be uh, you know, reading it in prediction mode. All right, so I'm reading it in prediction mode. I'm specifying the same variables, continuous and categorical, which we uh, trained the model with, and that's it. Then my model will be generating predicted output, uh, which will be processed by this expression evaluator. And finally, we'll persist it in S3, where uh, and dashboard can leverage it, right? So it's a simple training and prediction pipeline, which is uh, taking the data from actually Q, right? So with that, I think we have our demo part covered. Now let's sum it up. So uh, what we saw is uh, we saw self-service ingestion. So how easy it is to create a pipeline and how you can actually configure it on uh, variety of engines, Databricks and EMR, that, and you can you know, provide all, con all kinds of auto scaling capacity to make them scalable. And like a turnkey application, you can configure a CDC. And once all the data is processed, you can actually express all the dependencies on the ETL workflows and create all kinds of automated workflows here. So that's about uh, the ingestion what we saw. And once it is ready, you can build a smart OLAP cube, which is massively scalable on top of the process data, which is clean and, uh, you know, which does not have any duplication. And then uh, you can generate all sorts, all sorts of insights using a variety of BI tools within a matter of seconds. After that, we can also leverage those cubes as a source for further training and prediction. So that's all we had. Essentially, if you look at it, this end-to-end -end use case can be created visually, and this can actually rapid um, give a rapid pace to your development. So that's all we had from the demonstration. Uh, over to you, Larry. Excellent. I'd like to thank our panelists uh, for a very comprehensive walkthrough of this topic today, showing us how a unified analytics platform across ETL, machine learning, and BI uh, could actually function in the, in the live demonstration that you've just seen. So thank you, uh, all three of you. This is the time that we move to the Q&A portion of our webinar. Uh, we have a couple of uh, things, though, that we uh, other opportunities uh, for feedback. Uh, you'll see a feedback uh, uh, screen, which will allow you to rate your experience in uh, being on our webinar today. You'll see the ability there to enter a rating, but also to uh, add comments and remarks. And we look at all of those, take them very seriously, and use those to improve the user experience of our future webinars. There's also a second poll question there. And that poll question says, would you be interested in a deep dive of the unified product as shown in the webinar today? So I would ask you to, to do uh, both of those, rate your experience in the webinar, and then also let us know if you'd like more detail of those deep dive follow-ups, uh, have the, we have the ability to actually tailor that very specifically to your environment to address the, the particular features or aspects which seem to be most appropriate in your environment. That being said, we'll move now to the uh, question and answer portion of it. We have quite a list of questions that have come in. 
Uh, thank you for that. The first one said, is Kaivos only available on the cloud? How about on-prem? And Ajay Anand, maybe you could address that. Sure, yeah. So uh, Kaivos is available both on the cloud, on Amazon, Azure, or Google Cloud, or it's available on your Hadoop cluster or your Hadoop data lake on-premises as well. So uh, if you've got, you know, Cloudera, uh, I guess it's it's Cloudera now since Hortonworks is part of that. Uh, but yeah, in the in your on-prem data lake as well. Okay, great. There's another one here that asks specifically about applications for the healthcare industry. Does Stream Analytics and Kairos Architecture fit in the healthcare industry? It says we're facing challenges ingesting data from an agility perspective. And how could uh, the unified platform help uh, overcome those challenges? And who would like to take that one on? So I can, I can address the, the Kairos part of it in the healthcare industry. Uh, so basically, you know, when, when you're dealing with uh, healthcare data sources, th there's, you know, there's the issue of privacy that, that is important, uh, making sure that uh, your uh, uh, data is protected. And at Kaivos, we provide uh, the lowest level of granularity in terms of ensuring uh, uh, privacy is maintained. So we can take care of uh, uh, columnar role level security so that anybody that's looking at the data, you know, so you could have a variety of people in your uh, uh, healthcare enterprise that's uh, looking at the data and they should only be allowed to see what uh, they need to see. So. Uh, you can control that access so that a financial person or an HR person or a healthcare professional, uh, they can see different aspects of the data. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, obviously, wearables is a big issue in healthcare today, as well as uh, in the uh, ICU environment, the clinical environment, being able to respond to real-time triggers and so forth. And, the Stream Analytics product actually is designed to also accommodate IoT applications as they may apply to the healthcare industry. Another question which came in here, uh, Ajay, may be directed at you also. It says, are the cubes created automatically or have to be manually created with data movement? And Ajay, would you like to address that one? Sure. So as, as you saw in the demo, it, it, it's just a matter of identifying which data sets. So you could have, you know, massive amounts of data in your data lake, right? So now you want to say, okay, these data sets are important to me. So you identify the data sets and let Kaivos know that these data sets are, are the ones that I'm interested in, uh, in analyzing. And then, uh, you know, which, which are the fields that are important to my analysis? Uh, and you can choose as many fields as you want. People can choose, you know, hundreds of fields which are uh, uh, relevant to the analysis. And then we take that information and we go off and, you know, pre-compute and aggregate the data and create these multidimensional cubes and make that available to all your BI users. Uh, the next question is for Amarjeet. It says, can we implement custom logic for transformation apart from out of the out-of-the-box operators in stream analytics? And Amarjeet, if you could jump in and address that one. Sure. So uh, during the demonstration, we saw quite a few operators which were, which we were leveraging in our pipelines, which were built out of the box. But at the same time, uh, the platform allows you to express your business logic in a variety of languages. You can express it in Java, Python, Scala, SQL. And um, uh, interesting thing is, you know, you, while you're making these operators into, in a pipeline, you can also register them. So that not just you, anybody who is creating these ETL pipelines uh, in your workspace, they can get access to and reuse them. So yes, uh, apart from out of the box operator, you are free to express the custom logic as well. Okay, great. There's another question here, Amarjeet, possibly you could answer. What model libraries are available for use with uh, Stream Analytics? Uh, I'm sorry, Larry, can you come again? There's a question here that says, what model libraries are available to use with Stream Analytics? Yeah, so um, uh, there are quite a few actually. So um, we can leverage Python models. Um, you can actually take advantage of Scikit or um, machine learning, Spark machine learning operators are there. 
And if you have a model which is created in R, you can always export it in PML, a PMML and take advantage of it. Uh, H2O is available out of the box. So um, uh, I think there are quite a few actually. Excellent. And whoever asked that question, that did come from our live audience. If you need more detail, you can follow up through that uh, uh, unified at streamanalytics.com, and we'll be happy to get back to you in writing. Uh, that about concludes t the time that we have. We've answered most of the questions that came in from our live audience. There's a couple here that we may, uh, that we'll be able to send out on email. And I want to thank everyone that attended today. Also remind you before you exit, if you would please be sure to respond to our feedback poll. And if you would like a follow-up and be interested in a customized deep dive presentation of the unified product as shown in the webinar here today, uh, we'd be happy to follow up with you and, and help build out an exact ag agenda to show that to anyone uh, at your organization that may not have been able to see the presentation today. I would also remind you that if there are those that uh, could not attend or, or after you've now seen the presentation, you know would be interested, this presentation will be archived on our website and you can uh, refer them to that and they'll actually be able to hear the full presentation as you did here today, including the Q&A portion and the Q&A section. Thank you all uh, for attending. Thank you to our panelists for a very comprehensive run through. This concludes our webinar uh, for today, and please have a great balance of your day. Thanks again.